Hello everyone. Ooh, uh, here up. Oh, there we go. Hello. <laughs> Welcome to tea and stories with Mama Carla. I'm glad to see everyone today. I hope everyone Who's a mommy had a wonderful Mother's Day? I did. I had an amazing Mother's Day. I got a chance to spend time with my daughters, my son-in-law, and my beautiful, beautiful granddaughter, Skylar. So I'm extra happy and full of joy. Welcome, and as you come in, please share with your folks on Facebook. Um, again, our Tea and Stories are sponsored by my paparazzi business, which is Mama Carla Papa, Mama Carla's Paparazzi Accessories. Hi, Nessie. How are you, honey? Please share. Um, today, I'm going to do stories um, that are story poems. I have a couple. Um, some I'm going to do from memory. Some I'm going to read to you. These are story. These are ones most of which I wrote. Um, I'm also going to do a piece from Kalel Gibran. Um, Kalel Gibran's The Prophet. Um, this one I wrote for two beautiful, beautiful girls who I love very, very much. Um, I did this for them because um, they were telling me... I, I'm, for people who don't know, I'm a rites of passage facilitator. That means that um, I do programs with young women, um, young girls, to get them ready for womanhood or whatever their next step is um, in their journey. And for my younger girls, I'm getting them ready to be teenagers. For my teenagers, I'm getting them ready to step into young womanhood. For my young women, um, when I work with them, I'm helping them and getting them ready to step in to being a whole grown woman. Because young womanhood, you know, you're still kind of on the balance. But when you are in the middle of raising children and being a wife and being a mother, because we do motherhood rites of passage too, it, it's, it's more than a notion. Um, and then taking them from being mothers into what it's like. Hi, DeAndre. Please share. Um, I take them into that next step, which is the step that I'm in really is elderhood and what it means to be an elder and what it means to be the parent of adult children, which is different. And then that next step is into being grandparents. Um, sometimes those things all come together. Sometimes they don't. Um, I know that being a grandmother has been like one of the most wonderful things. I've had a lot of adopted grandchildren over the years because I've had a lot of young women who think of me as mama. Um, and I appreciate that. But it's it's different when you're supporting your children. Um, having my granddaughter has been one of the greatest joys of my life. I really love my little Skylar. She's an awesome child. And um, she kept telling me all over the weekend, because we hadn't seen each other for almost two months, you know, to, to really touch one another. And she said, I love you. I love you, Mimi. Because that's what she calls me. It was wonderful. <sighs> but I want to read to you, Beautiful Mind, an ode to my young girls. She leaned against the classroom door, reading a thick novel she kept in her backpack. Maya Angelou's words seeping into her brain cells along with beautiful words of her own. Her awesomeness talking to her heart so loud that she couldn't hear what the rude boys were saying to her. How could they look into her beautiful eyes and not see her beautiful mind? How could they view her intelligent face and not see her divine. The haters lined up in the gym class and watched her shoot the ball. The girl is thick and dark and bright. She's bound to be a star, yet they whisper things about her, half-truths and full-blown lies. 
She concentrates and ignores their hate, her mind above their drones. How can they look into her beautiful eyes and not see her beautiful mind? How could they see her bravery and not see her divine? She gets on the bus every morning with her baby and books in tow. Gently, she loves on her progeny, protecting her as they go. The elders give her the side eye, her story they think they know. They see her as young, foolish, and weak, another wasted life of woe. But that sister, that sister graduates college in another month or so. She and her guy are together, but they're raising their child in peace. And every day she loves on her child, pouring life into her as she speaks. How could they look into her beautiful eyes and not see her beautiful mind? How they could hear her mama's voice and not see her divine? Little sisters, I see you. I hear you. I feel you. I've been you. In all your glory, pain, and triumph, and sorrow, stare them down with your beautiful eyes. Lock and load with your beautiful soul. Wound and heal with your beautiful mind. Speak life into them with your beautiful voice. Never be ashamed of your righteous tears. I will always look into your beautiful eyes and see your beautiful mind. I will value your story and see your divine. That is for Deshaun and Dana, Amethyst and Mariah, Jahan and Nuri. For my little girls that have been part of Rites of Passage or I have raised to let you know that no matter what you go through in life, you are a winner. I write a lot. I write a lot because I think that in this day and time, especially now during this pandemic, but even before then, we need to be able to work things out through our minds before we say them to other people. Sometimes people say things and we don't mean what we say or we don't hear it. We need to hear it. Hello, Sister Mary. Welcome, welcome. And thank you for sharing. A lot of times people will say things to each other because we haven't really thought it out. But when we write, we get a chance to do that. Even if the only person you ever write for is yourself. Um, also, it's a really good document to leave when you're not here anymore. You know, what kind of person was this person who I loved? Um, and some things you may not be able to tell your progeny or tell your people when you're alive. But after you're gone, they may need to know that about you. And it helps them, you know. Um, my next poem is called Defining Love. And the shout out for this one goes to Oni Solani. Um, Oni and I are sisters and stories and keepers of the culture. And she and I had this really long convert well, kind of an email conversation and she said she was getting ready to leave Tobago and come back here and she said um, I don't like to say I love you unless I really mean it you know because I love you should only be said when you really mean it and I thought about it and I said I always mean it when I say I love you and I say I love you especially to my friends and stuff when I leave them um, I'm a person who's had a lot of loss in my life. And when you've had a lot of loss, you realize that you know, there's some things that you don't want to leave unsaid. And I love you is one of them. This is called defining love. Some say love is hot, heavy, and hard to stay faithful to. I guess it would be if I loved like you do. Some say love is too serious to say all the time. It should be silent, reserved for those who I choose to be mine. Some say love is for family, 
those who share blood with me. Some say love is a tool used to trap lovesick fools. Some see love as a remedy and hate as a malady. Some see it the other way around. The world, the word love makes them frown. I feel all of your views, but I can't be narrow like you. The kinds of love are much like senses. They vary in ways, means, and tenses. One love is reserved just for your boo, the one who turns your heart to goo. <laughs> love is a feeling of laughter and relief. It's the healing and scarring from joy and from grief. Love is the smell under a baby's chin, the scent of Sunday dinner and of your lover's skin. Love is the sight of sunrise and set, the goosebumps that arise when your forever is met. Love is the sound of a new life song and the stories told when life's about gone. Love is the taste of happy tears, a cup of time to share our fears and love, yes, as fragile as it is, is brave and real. It can devastate as well as heal. And love is indeed in every day to show and grow and yes, to say. So don't hold back. We need the glow to light our darkness and restart our flow. I hope you enjoyed that one. Hello, Arnold. Please share while you're out there. And thank you for wishing me a happy Mother's Day. Again, to all my moms that are joining me, happy Mother's Day, y'all. Um, like I said, I write a lot. I write about a lot of different things. Um, this particular story, this particular story poem is, I dedicate to my storytelling twin, Irma Hammond Garner. Now, the reason why I um, wrote this is because my sister went and got a haircut. It was beautiful, right by the way. Mm. I had to sip my tea. And I really, really love um, her haircut. And um, <laughs> she was teasing and saying, oh, goodness, I'm going about bald. But she looks really beautiful. She looks so regal. Um Mama Linda Goss, who is our storytelling mama, she said that she calls Irma Mama Africa, and she is, because she really raised her children in that African aesthetic um, here in the United States, which is hard. Um, but this is for her. I haven't named it yet, so I'm going to call it Irma Song. Hey, sister girl with them short, nappy curls. Why you looking like you want to break all the rules? Why you making that negative face at him? Stop acting like a rock when you know you're a gem. Hey, sister girl with that banging little fro. Thinking about things that you can't ever know. I see that book written right here in your head. Go on right for the world instead. Hey, sister queen with those long, regal locks. Don't let them call you something you know you're not. Don't let their ignorance get a sister down. Gather your courage. Straighten your crown. Hey, sister girl, rocking that wave. Just because you're not like them, don't let it deceive. Don't be afraid to be just who you are. Your beautiful mind is what makes you a star. And it's true. We all have that star potential in us. And it doesn't matter what our hair looks like. It doesn't matter what anybody thinks. Because it's nobody's business but ours. And I think that we have to support each other as sisters. If you look at some of my posts, what you'll see is that I really, really try to make sure that I support my sisters and I give them some love. We as women 
had been taught to be rivals with each other and to fight against each other. And the same thing with our brothers. And we can't do that. We need to give each other some love and some support, especially in these days and times. I mean, it is like crucial that we give each other support. I mean, people are, are out here taking their lives out of fear and loneliness and depression. And we can't do that to each other. Um, life is too precious. Come on. And I mean, even when things are hard, life is precious. And we have to realize that. Um, my next piece is actually, hopefully is going to be turned into a children's book. I've got a little work to do on it, but I wanted to share it with you guys today. This is another one of my pieces and it's called the music house. Um, this is a shout out to my sisters and, um, we, we sang as children, we played instruments, um, having artistic expression for children is really important. But especially having music around them and having upbuilding music. Because we have some music that, oof, it's that edge. <laughs> I mean, I mean, everybody needs an angry song, okay? I, I got my angry sister songs. Um, I think Hit em Up Style is the reason why some girls have gotten beat up in the past. If you guys don't know the song, you should look at it. It's called Hit, Hit, it Up Style, Hit em Up Style. It's one of them songs. It's them angry songs. And... Angry songs are important, too, because, again, it helps to get out that rage and stuff. But we have to use common sense along with anything. But the things that go into our ears go into our mind and understand that. So the things we say and the things we sing and the things we do are all part of forming us as people. That's why we need to be around those who are positive. But this is called the music house. No matter where you go, there's always that house at the end of the street. It's that place where all the music comes from. When I was raising mine, it was the Sanborn house. The sweet sounds filled our little street all day. I could tell what time of the day it was by the type of music wafting into my window. On school mornings, we'd hear, Wake up everybody, no more sleeping in bed. Or, Monday, Monday, can't trust that day. Coaxing their five children from slumber. Ty, Mina, Brenda, Grayson, and baby Essie would wipe the sleep from their eyes and get up and wash up for breakfast. Ever so often, the Jackson Five would sing A, B, C, while the children joined in. Other times, the children would argue over one radio station that played only R&B and the one that played rock. Usually, their mother would choose. After she sent the older, ch older ones to school, Mrs. Sanborn would put on her gospel albums just before her husband came in from work from overnight. The storm is passing over. The storm is passing over. The storm is passing over, hallelujah. And how great thou art. Kept her company as she washed dishes and clothes while making her husband some biscuits and red-eyed gravy with coffee. Sometimes she'd sing with Mahalia Jackson and the Love Alive Orchestra as little Essie banged out the rhythm with her spoon on her high, high chair tray. Mr. Sanborn would turn on B.B. King and Fats Waller as he ate a quick breakfast and took a shower. And at last, falling to hard sleep to the raspy sounds of Billie Holiday or the scat of Louis Armstrong. Little Essie was soothed to nap time by Jeffrey Osborne's On the Wings of Love and the Doobie Brothers. I keep forgetting not in love anymore. The rest of the afternoon welcomed quiet big band standards while Miss Sanborn did her mundane chores, humming along. The older children's return home always ushered in instrument pieces. Instrument practice, excuse me. Ty played sax while his sister Mina practiced clarinet 
And after the standard finger practices, they would often play some Kenny G or a popular tune just for fun. Brenda practiced her cello or violin in the tiny basement room while Grayson banged out rhythm in their soundproof attached garage. Each child had an hour of practice, but each were known to go over that hour. Homework time was supposed to be quiet, <laughs> but it was often filled with the low hum of Stevie Wonder or Gladys Knight in the pits. And at night, every night, you would hear the whole family sing all the pretty little ponies down in the valley or return to Pooh Corner for little Essie and the rest to drift off to sleep too. The last music of the day was the sound of orchestral music playing along with quiet conversation as husband and wife prepared to part for the night during the week or snuggled into bed on the weekends. Yes, there's always that neighborhood house, or there should be, where music tells the time of day. My wish for you is that you either live near a house or in it. It can change the whole rhythm of your life. It can change the whole world. I hope you guys like that story. Please give me some feedback. Let me know if you think that that should be my children's book. I hope so. Um, I'm shopping around for illustrators right now. So if you know any illustrators, let me know. Um... The next piece that I'm going to do for you is actually from Kalel Gibran. If I can, I think I put it on here. If not, I, I think I have it memorized by now. Um, for you guys who don't know anything about the Prophet, uh, the Prophet was written again by Kalel Gibran. The prophet was about a young man who was a religious monk who was dispatched to um, a town in India to roam there for five years. Um, when his ship came back from him after those five years, be just before he left, the prophetess of the village asked him to sit down and basically share with the village the things that he learned by being among them. Uh, these short little poems are the basis for many people and really help them. This particular piece is called Speak to Us of Children. And a woman who held a babe against her bosom said, Speak to us of children. And the prophet put up his hands and silence fell upon the people. And he looked at them and said, your children are not your children. They are sons and daughters of life's longing for itself. They come through you, but not from you. And though they are with you, they belong not to you. You may give them your love, but not your thoughts. For they have their own thoughts. You may house their bodies, but not their souls. For their souls dwell in the house of tomorrow, which you cannot visit, not even in your dreams. You can strive to be like them, but not to make them like you. For life goes not backwards nor tarries with yesterday. The rest of that poem talks about us as parents being like bows in an archer's hand and that God sees his path on the infinite and he uses us to launch those little people, those little arrows. He said, let your bending in the archer's hand be for gladness. And it speaks to us as parents 
the same thing that the Bible speaks to us as. It's not aggravating our children, but giving our children a push towards life and towards love. And we need to do that as people. A lot of times we don't, and we need to. Um, yes, we have some unruly children out there, and a lot of it's because they're being raised by devices. Um, we're giving them devices and we're not engaging with them. Devices are nothing but tools. And there's nothing wrong with devices. But what comes out to be a problem is when that's all we have. And that's all we use. And when we don't love up on our children and when we don't listen to their dreams and their hopes and support them because we really do need to do that as human beings I'm glad that I got a chance to spend this time with you guys today um, we have four more four more days four or five more days oh thank you Janice I appreciate that we have four or five more days of stories coming up um, I hope that you'll tell me what kind of stories you want to hear. Hit me up on my Facebook page. I do listen. I do go through my feed and, and I listen to what people have to say about what stories they want to hear. Hello, sister girl. How are you? Happy Mother's Day, my sisters. Um, I listen to the stories that you want to hear. Uh, I do. I am going to do just one section of nothing but children's stories. I promised my granddaughter, who will be too soon, that I may do the puff puff fish, just for her. For you guys who've never heard pow pow fish, it's pow pow, pow pow fish is an awesome story, and it, it, it's about changing your frown upside upside down, <laughs> and. Just the joy that stories bring. Um, again, I hope that you enjoy our time together. I have enjoyed it. Here's to all of you. And make sure you have your tea and stories every day. Thank you. Bye-bye.